Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to Haley's Space. My name is Haley. I'm a nurse and knitter currently living in Melbourne, Australia, and I have a little knit and chat for you guys today. There are plenty of new faces around here, so I wanted to make this video so that you guys could get to know me a little bit better, but I also wanted to get to know you guys. So if you want to answer any of the questions that I mentioned today in this video in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. We can have a little chit chat. Maybe we've got something in common. I asked on both Instagram and YouTube, there was a little community post on my channel uh, for questions and you guys kind of showed up and asked me heaps, uh, which I was really surprised and happy about. So I've got a lot to talk about today. Firstly, I'm gonna talk about what I'm gonna be knitting on today. Uh, I'm knitting a little baby knit. This is a gift knit that's going to pair with my baby bear bonnet that I made a couple of weeks ago which you can see in my most recent podcast episode. Uh, but these are the great overalls. They're by Berta Knit Store. Uh, and they're just this cute little pair of baby overalls. I'm knitting the second size, which is like three to six months, I think. And this yarn is Cleck Heat and Baby Yarn 100% Nylon in this really cute baby pink color. So I have a little bit of knitting to do on this one. I've got to get to a certain uh, length. And I think I'm about four or five centimeters off from that. So I'm going to try and get a decent chunk done on that during this video. Uh, but I will probably stop to measure every now and then. I've got my trusty tape measure, which was gifted to me by Morgan. Thank you so much, Bestie. Uh, and yeah, we're just going to see, see how far I get. Let me know down in the comments as well what you're knitting on or crafting on whilst watching this video. And I think we might just get into it. I'm going to do a couple of stitches to kind of get me on track <laughs> and then I'll be back. Okay. The first thing I wanted to talk about was my surprise knit along, which you guys might have seen. I posted about on Instagram as well as uh, here on YouTube. But Morgan and I have decided to do a knit along of the Salty Days sweater by Kutova Kika. We're running this knit along from September 1st to November 30th. So there's still plenty of time to sort out your yarn, to join the group chat and to get involved. Uh, there's no real strict rules with this knit along either. We don't have any prizes or anything like that. It's just a bit of fun and to uh, make some friends whilst knitting the same pattern. So even if you've already cast it on, I know a couple of people already have it as a whip who have joined the knit along. Um, even if you've already cast on, feel free to join as well. We'd love to hear your tips and tricks as we all uh, knit along on this project. The only thing you really need to do to get involved in the knit along is follow Morgan and I both on Instagram and YouTube and to post your project pictures and your updates on Instagram using the hashtag salty days cal and salty days sweater and tag both Morgan and I so that we can see it. Again, it's just a little bit of fun to get to know some other knitters and all knit the same pattern at the same time and have a good time. So. If you would like to join the group chat as well, uh, leave your Instagram handle down in the comments with the shell emoji and I will add you to the group chat so uh, we can all knit along together. All right, let's get into some questions. I've got my computer here next to me, which has everything listed. Uh, my friend Morgan from Morgan Unraveled, who I'm hosting the knit along with, she asked me heaps of questions. <laughs> so I'm gonna answer a few of them. She asked some really, really good ones. I will start with one of the biggest ones I guess she asked me and a couple other people asked me as well. I think Budget with Re also asked me this question, but um, what made me want to learn to knit? So I first learned to knit uh, when I was maybe 12 years old-ish, maybe 13. Uh, my mum had a bunch of knitting needles and some yarn in her like sewing box. and. One day my brother and I were bored, I think it was like school holidays or something, and we found the needles and the yarn and so we kind of learnt to knit. I think we asked mum to teach us and also watch some YouTube videos. But the needles I think were probably like 2mm needles and the yarn was so 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 thin, it was like lace weight yarn. And my brother and I both, both cast on scarves. So as you can imagine, that took a million years and we gave up pretty quickly. <laughs> And there was lots of holes. It was kind of scraggly, I think. My, my mom's probably gotten rid of it now, but it was gray and it was just like this like rectangle. 
Anyway, I remember that really vividly. But yeah, gave up on that pretty quickly. And then height of the pandemic in 2020, I was downloading TikTok and I got onto Crochet Talk and started watching a lot of those uh, amigurumi like making videos on TikTok, which was great. And also just like crochet compilations. It was great brain rot like material. Uh, but then I started looking for crochet people on YouTube and I found the copy dolls. They were crocheting at the time and I kind of got addicted and I decided, you know what, I can do that. So I taught myself how to crochet using YouTube and heavily inspired by the copy dolls. Uh, and then they slowly started getting into knitting and I was like, oh no, there's no way like I'm going to do that. Like that's just too hard. Like I don't think I'm a knitter. I really love crochet. But then I crocheted up my first garment. I crocheted a jumper, just um, literally self-drafted, the most dodgy thing you've probably ever seen. I think I knit like two rectangular panels for the front and the back, joined them and did a ribbed, crochet ribbed neckline and then knit the, or crocheted the sleeves in the round and attached a ribbing onto those. Super dodgy, did not look great. And I decided that I hated it. <laughs> And I hated the way crochet garments looked just with the way that I was making them. And so I caved and I got some knitting needles and some yarn from Spotlight and I taught myself how to knit, again, heavily influenced by the copy dolls. And sort of the rest is history. Four years later, we're here. <laughs> I think my first year to two years of knitting, I didn't really make a lot of garments and a lot of like things I don't know and I think I frogged a lot of them or threw them out or gifted them and I was very very slow at the time because I was a beginner so I don't really have any of my first projects to show you I think I have a couple of beanies upstairs that I know I definitely knit in my first two years of knitting but I didn't really keep much of it so I don't have much to show you but um yeah that's kind of how I got into knitting if you're from Melbourne you would know about the year-long lockdown that we were stuck in and so I needed something to do and that was a great a great outlet I think for my energy being balled up inside the house I guess leading on from that is the next question which is asked by the knitting ritual and it's why did you start vlogging so as I said I started watching like knitting and crochet youtubers and watching the copy dolls and they started kind of really doing podcasts and things like that which led me down the rabbit hole that is knitting podcasts on YouTube and I found some other great ones that I really enjoyed uh, and I just felt really inspired but I didn't really feel like I was good enough or capable enough to make a podcast until last year uh, when I posted my first episode which was almost I think exactly a year now a little over a year I felt a lot of I guess intimidation and imposter syndrome when I first started podcasting but I think because it's something that I'd wanted to do for so long, like so, so long, I think it, um, I got over that fairly quickly, I guess. Uh, and I kind of found my rhythm and found what I enjoyed doing and, and how I enjoyed editing. And whilst it's still changing and shifting all the time, uh, as we do, um, I'm still enjoying it and I'm still glad that I did it. So yeah, that's kind of why I started. I was heavily inspired by a lot of other knitting podcasters and just decided I want to do that. I want to share my knitting. I think also when my boyfriend moved away, I kind of lost that outlet where I could share my knitting with somebody else. I'm just going to check that I'm doing this pattern right. Yes, I am doing the pattern right. Oh my God, I panicked. Uh, yeah, so when my boyfriend moved away, I kind of lost someone to talk to about my knitting you know he joined the army which meant he couldn't talk every day uh still can't talk every day and so i was like you know what i'll start a podcast because i don't have any friends who knit so i might as well share it with the internet and find a community of people who also enjoy knitting and that happened <laughs> yeah i've been grateful every single second since i started the channel for all the people that I've found and all the people that I've spoken to and all the things that I've learned as well. I feel like I've come a really long way as a knitter and as a person 
um, just from meeting a wide range of people from different backgrounds and experiences, but who have all come together to share this hobby. It's, it's really nice. It's really wholesome. Again, that kind of leads us to the next question, which quite a few people asked me as well. Um, there was quite a few common questions, but it was favorite lesson that I've learned in my knitting journey. I think I'll start with a big one, which is patience. <laughs> I am quite an impatient person. I like to have things in my hands straight away. And if I'm not good at something straight away, I will kind of not really put much into it. So starting knitting and facing a lot of challenges with that, with learning a new skill and trying to train my brain to do this weird activity with my hands, uh, it taught me a lot of patience and also resilience just to sit there and be mindful and really put in a lot of effort and focus into one, into one thing. I think that's probably the biggest lesson that I've learned so far and I'm still learning it, you know. I find sometimes I go down a rabbit hole of wanting to finish objects really quickly and I often have to remind myself to slow down and just enjoy the process. So I'm always learning patience. I think technique wise, I have learned that you can always think back. You can always ladder down and you can always fix it. There's no need to frog every single time. Uh, you can always, almost always, find a way to think back and fix your mistakes without ripping the whole thing apart. <laughs> and I've mainly learned that from you guys. Uh, I've had some really helpful comments over the last couple of podcasts of people teaching me how to fix my mistakes in knitted work, especially in cables. Um, my book club cardigan has been a real learning curve for me in terms of cable mistakes and uh, textured mistakes and how to fix those without ripping the whole thing apart. And so, yeah, I'm really appreciative to all of you guys for teaching me that lesson and giving me a lot of helpful resources as well to fix my mistakes. Sam's Handmade Stuff on Instagram asked me as well, what knitting technique are you most proud of yourself for learning? And I definitely think cables is my top technique that I've learned so far and how to fix cables. I thought cables were really intimidating when I first started knitting, but there was something that I really, really wanted to do because they just look so delicious. I really, really, really desperately want to finish like my Moby sweater and I can't wait to knit a cable sweater for my dad. And whilst I don't particularly enjoy doing cables, I just don't think I've found a way that is efficient and comfortable for me just yet. I still am proud of myself for learning it. My first big sweater that I knit up was for my mum and that was a cabled sweater. And whilst it's not my finest piece of work, uh, it's probably one of the ones that I'm most proud of. So yeah, cables for sure. Okay, next question is from Apricot and Honey Co on Instagram who's just joined the knit along. Hi, if you're watching, <laughs> I added them to the group chat literally yesterday. So very exciting. Uh, they asked me, are you originally from Australia? And the answer to that is yes. All my family are from Australia, except for um, like some distant relations. Uh, my mum's dad was from Austria. So we've got quite a few Austrian distant relatives, but my family's from Australia. <laughs> I was born in Western Australia. And then when I was a couple months old, my parents moved us to Queensland. And so I went to primary school in Queensland until I was about, I think, 11 or 12 years old. And then we moved back to Western Australia. I did my high school years in WA in Perth. And then for university, I moved here to Victoria, to Melbourne to study. And yeah, I've been here ever since, but uh, there is potentially another big move in the works. Um, but I won't talk about that much yet because even we don't know if it's 100% confirmed. So I won't get carried away with talking about that, but yeah, from Australia. <laughs> Morgan asked me what my favorite book is and it changes all the time, <laughs> but I think my, the book that I would reread over and over again would either have to be Love Hypothesis or A Court of Mist and Fury. Those two books sort of changed my life. I know that's kind of 
dramatic to say, but um, Love Hypothesis kind of re-sparked my love of reading and getting into romance novels. I hadn't really read much since high school. And so when I picked up Love Hypothesis and also The Hating Game, uh, those two books kind of reinvigorated my love for reading and I sort of haven't gone back since then. <laughs> And then I read A Court of Thorns and Roses last year and the second book, A Court of Mist and Fury, really just shifted something in me. Uh, I sobbed, I wept on the floor when I finished that book. I'm even going to cry thinking about it now. <laughs> that book is so beautifully written and the way Sarah J Maas talks about her characters and describes her characters is just so beautiful and the story is so gut-wrenching. Uh, if you haven't read A Court of Thorns and Roses, I suggest you do. It is uh, romanticy, so fantasy with quite a bit of romance. I would say that the highlight is on the romance rather than the fantasy, uh, but it's a great one if you haven't really read much in the last couple of years, you know what I mean? My brother actually binged uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses last month and finished all of them. <laughs> uh, so we had a lot to talk about with that. And they're just great books. So definitely highly recommend. Uh, but also I am a big Harry Potter fan. So any of the Harry Potter books, I will love forever and ever. And I will continue to reread them every year till I die, I reckon. <laughs> I think my favorite of the Harry Potter books is definitely either Goblet of Fire or Order of the Phoenix. I just love the vibes and the energy in those two books. So yeah, those are my favorite books. <laughs> Morgan also asked me what my top three Taylor Swift albums are. Number one is Reputation. Uh, Reputation sort of reinvigorated my love for Taylor Swift because um, obviously she went quiet for a little while. I loved 1989 when it came out. Uh, but then yeah, she went quiet for a little while so I didn't listen to her music for quite a long time. But uh, then Reputation came out and I was like, oh my God, no, yeah, we're back. <laughs> and something about that album will just live in my soul forever. I absolutely love it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that album. I think it's a perfect album. My second favorite is definitely Folklore. Folklore gives like witchy forest fairy vibes and I hope to one day be a cottagecore forest fairy. Uh, but I also think it's, my favorite of her albums because of its lyrics and because of its story. I think she just did such a beautiful job with that album, especially during a time when everyone was not really sure what was going to happen with the state of the world. So having that as kind of a crutch to lean on was really, really nice. So yeah, that's my second favorite. And then my third favorite would have to be Red. Uh, Red was the first Taylor Swift concert that I went to. And I loved it. I cried during All Too Well. Yes, I was like, what, 13 years old? <laughs> but I cried during All Too Well and I loved it. So that album holds a special place in my heart. And Red Taylor's version, I absolutely fell in love with. I Bet You Think About Me is probably one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs and I will listen to it till the day that I die. <laughs> okay, back onto knitting. <laughs> Lots of people ask me for my un unpopular or controversial knitting opinions. And I don't really know if like I have any, I don't know if that's kind of a cop out, but uh, I don't know what's actually controversial in the community or not. I think one that I hear a lot of discourse about is Magic Loop and I love Magic Loop. <laughs> I really enjoy it, especially for socks. I don't know if that's unpopular or controversial. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of other people out there who love Magic Loop, but I have heard of lots of people who absolutely hate it and refuse to do it. So I don't know if that counts, but yeah, Magic Loop. <laughs> I got a lot of questions as well about uh, what stores I buy my yarn from here in Australia and what are my favorite yarn stores in Australia. And I have to be honest with you, a lot of my yarn has been bought from Spotlight. Uh, I obviously began in crochet, which meant a lot of the yarns that I bought were acrylic yarns from Spotlight. So I've only really started getting into more higher quality yarns from uh, smaller yarn stores. 
Two that I have been to that I really love are Morris and Sons. Morris and Sons, there's one in Sydney and then there's one in the city here in Melbourne. And I included it in a vlog. I don't remember when, uh, but I'll put it here somewhere so you can have a look. But yeah, I went there for the first time and absolutely loved it. I adore that store. It's so, so beautiful. I want to go back soon uh, with a project in mind so I can actually buy some yarn. But yeah, Morris and Sons is a great one. Another one which is literally around the corner from me is Sunspun, which is a really gorgeous, really small uh, craft store or knitting store here in Melbourne. And I love that store. It's so, so cozy. I think they do knitting classes and knit nights and stuff like that there as well. I haven't been in ages, but uh, I do want to go back, obviously, with another project in mind so I can buy something there. But that was the first, like, nice knitting store that I had ever gone to. So I saw, like, Isagar mohair and stuff like that in person for the first time. So I was a little bit starstruck. So I definitely want to go back. So those two are great if you're based in Melbourne and you want to go to an in-person yarn store if you do have any suggestions as well for yarn stores in melbourne specifically or in the rest of australia please let me know i'm always keen to hear about some more options for buying my yarn as for buying yarn online i know the yarn trader is supposed to be great for buying yarn online in australia i have never bought from them before uh, but I've heard they're supposed to be quite good. I'm not too sure about their variety. I had a look the other night at what yarns are available on there. If you're based in Australia, uh, it can be hard to get your hands on some higher end or popular brand yarns. So check out Yarn Trader. Otherwise, there's also Wool Warehouse. And whilst that's based in the UK, their prices are actually quite decent, especially for any drops yarn. That's where I ordered my first ever drops yarn from. And their prices are quite low. They're always in line with the sales that drops has going on. I think at the moment there's like an alpaca party drops sale going on. It's like 30% off or something. So uh, they're always keeping up with those. So if you want to try drops yarn, definitely check them out. And their shipping prices aren't that egregious. They're actually okay for Australia. So definitely check them out. As always though, please leave any yarn store recommendations in the comments for everyone to see. Okay, Rochelle from Queen's Yarn Boutique asked me if I ever have trouble getting my knitting needles through airport security. And the answer is so far, no. You guys may have seen that I have traveled quite a bit this year. That's just the way the year has sort of gone. And I have never ever had trouble getting my knitting needles through security both domestically and internationally. So I knit pretty much exclusively with metal needles. And I was concerned when I first started knitting about taking my knitting on the plane, but I checked uh, Australian border security laws and knitting needles are not prohibited. They're actually part of the accepted list, but it does depend on the airline. I know Qantas has in their policy that knitting needles aren't prohibited. You're allowed to take them on Qantas flights. Uh, but I'm not sure about other airlines and just always just be mindful um, that it is a possibility that some airports may not act in line with the border security laws but you can always pull up a copy and go well I was following this so whatever but yeah just be mindful don't take my word as gospel uh, internationally I have never had trouble so I've flown to both Thailand and Bali with metal knitting needles in my carry-on and that, that was fine and I have also flown internationally to the United States and back again with metal needles in my carry-on so and metal crochet hooks as well in my carry-on so take that with a grain of salt <laughs> I'm not saying it'll work every time but in Australia it's not illegal Alrighty, quite a few people ask me what my favorite thing is to make. And honestly, anything color work at the moment. I am in love with color work. I want to knit all the color work sweaters. I want to knit all the color work socks. I'm so, so inspired by color work at the moment. So I think currently that's my favorite thing to make. I know I went through a beanie phase for a little while where I loved making beanies. Uh, but yeah, color work at the moment has been great. Otherwise, yes, socks as well. Loving. Colour work or vanilla, whatever it might be. Textured socks. I'm really, really getting into my sock knitting and really enjoying that at the moment. I have screwed this pattern. Hold on. 
getting distracted. <laughs> okay, I fixed it. I did a pearl where there should have been a knit. So yeah, I'm falling in love with socks more and more. I'm not sure if I'm keen yet to try new sock constructions. Uh, I do love my slip stitch, heel flap and gusset and just like, I think it's a round toe. I'm not sure, the one where you decrease on each side like that and then Kitchener at the top. I don't remember what that's called. But that's my favorite sock construction at the moment and I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. Uh, another question I got though was, what's your favorite knit that you've made? Uh, and I honestly think my Magnum Opus is my porcelain sweater by Lynette. I knit this up using Plotilope in the Heathered Marsh and Heathered Oatmeal colorways. And I absolutely love that sweater. I adore it. I love wearing it. I love taking pictures in it. <laughs> it's so incredibly cozy. And I think the color work design is just gorgeous. I would like to knit up another one uh, with the colors inverted. So having white as the background and I was thinking maybe a, like an emerald mossy green for the color work, uh, but who knows when I'll get around to doing that. I know it's on my list, but who knows if I'll get there. But yeah, that's my favorite thing that I've ever knit at the moment. I'm gonna give this a quick measure because I don't want them to be too long for baby. I'm at the point where I need to do some changes to the pattern. So the last question that I have today is who are some Australian YouTubers who inspire you? Uh, and also, can you re recommend any other Aussie YouTubers? So I'll start with those that inspire me. Um, I'm going to start with Ali from Fiberbound. She was one of the first podcasters that I started watching sort of religiously. Um, Australian, I should say. Um, and I adore her videos. I just, I find her content so cozy and so nostalgic for me in terms of learning to knit. Another YouTuber who inspires me, who isn't Australian, uh, is Penrose Knits. She was the very, very first uh, podcaster that I started watching. And I get emotional <laughs> very easily, but uh, Laura from Penrose Knits, she really changed my perspective on a lot of things in both life and in knitting. I've learned a lot from watching her videos and I just really, really enjoy her content. I recently found Ash from Smash Knits, literally this week. Uh, I didn't know that she made videos and I love them. I love her aesthetic, the bright colors, the pinks, everything. So Ash from Smash Knits is another great Aussie podcaster. Uh, I'll list off a few as well that I watch um, quite regularly. So Kath from the Mindful Melbourne Maker, uh, Alex from the Serenity Knitting Society, and Sian from the Obsessive Maker podcast. I watch all of those people a lot. <laughs> uh, and it brings me so much joy when they bring out new videos. But yeah, if you're looking for some Aussie podcasters, definitely check those out. A new one that was recommended to me recently was uh, Tash from Mostly Knitting. She's also Australian and I've only watched one video from her so far, which I thoroughly enjoyed. So check her out as well if you want. And I've had some other recommendations in my comments because I ask quite regularly for you guys to recommend some Australian podcasters. Uh, but these ones I haven't had the chance to watch any videos from yet. Uh, so I'll suggest them here, but I haven't watched them yet. Uh, so I've got Kooky Knits, Oliphant Cat Knits, Pepper Knits, Kel Knits, and Claire Likes to Knit. <laughs> Uh, I will list all of those in the description box below so you can go and check them out. Uh, but yeah, as I said, I haven't, I haven't had the chance to check them out myself yet. So I hope you enjoy them. Um, other Aussie YouTubers that I enjoy who don't talk about knitting are Chloe from Chloe Bunny. I think she used to be called something else. Uh, cause she was mainly a booktuber for quite a while and also like a journaler, um, on YouTube, uh, but she sort of shifted her, I guess like you could say branding or style of videos and stuff. She does more vlogs now. She still does like reading vlogs and things like that. Um, but I love, I love her videos. I've been watching her for years. So if you're into, uh, kind of gothic, but also girly vibes, like girly gothic vibes, uh, and reading, definitely go check Chloe out. Otherwise, uh, Cups and Thoughts 
is another great YouTuber. They make really aesthetic, cozy videos, uh, just subtitled videos. Uh, but as far as I can discern, I believe they're from Western Australia, uh, near Perth. So uh, when I figured that out, I was like, oh my God, another West Australian. But yeah, their videos are so, so beautiful. So if you do get the chance to check them out, I definitely highly suggest that you do uh, for some cozy, wholesome content. Those are all the questions I have, guys. And I've made some pretty decent progress. I'm ready to cast off some stitches for the armholes on these overalls, which is fantastic. I was kind of dreading work working the rest of the, the body on these overalls because it was just taking forever. So I'm really happy that I got to smash smash that out. Alrighty. Oh my gosh, I feel like that went by so quickly. Normally I just talk everybody's ear off. I don't know how long I've been filming for. But uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed it. I've been wanting to film this video for so long now. So I'm so glad I actually got to sit down and speak to you guys a bit more casually. I am vlogging this week. So next week you're going to see uh, what I've been doing this week. You'll see a little bit more as well on the process of these overalls as well as some other knits that I'm getting up to. Don't forget as well, if you're keen to join the Salty Days Knit Along, uh, comment your Instagram handle down below with the shell emoji and be sure to follow both Morgan and I on Instagram and here on YouTube uh, so we can add you to the group chat and you can knit along with us throughout September and November. Please remember to like and subscribe. That always helps this video reach a bunch of other knitters as well so we can make even more friends. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. As always, I hope you're safe and well wherever you are and I will see you next week. Bye.